All right, so I'll open Windows Movie Maker. This is the older version, 2.6. This is what the uh, interface looks like, the GUI. Basically, you have your steps outlined right down here in order. You have your collections window, which is where your media files will live. On the left, first step, import video, import pictures, import audio or music. So since I'm going to be importing both pictures and music, I'm going to grab my pictures and my music, and I will just drag those into the collections window. Collections being where all your media files will always be visible during your session. And now I will full screen it. And you can select things in the collections window and they will show up in the preview window so you can check and see what pictures you have and if there were some that maybe you didn't like you could just uh, right click on them and delete them just like any other Windows file and it's good to do that at the beginning uh, preview everything look at it over here delete because that just keeps this workspace tidy so what I usually do with slideshows is I just grab everything, all of the um, pictures anyway, select them, and drag them down into the video section. And what that does is it dumps all the pictures in. But if you hover over it, you'll see it gives the pictures a default time of five seconds each, which is pretty good for a starting point. I'm also going to grab this audio file, and down here is an audio music track. And I'll bring that, I'll butt it right up against the beginning of the uh, movie. And there it all goes in. You see it's a little bit too long, but there are different ways of dealing with that later. You might want to check your sequence. Since I just dragged all the, fi all the files in at once, you have kind of a random sequence in there. They do go in from top to bottom, but you, you still might not like the sequence. There's two ways to step your way through to preview the pictures. You can either do it down here, and this will change the preview window, or you can do it over here using the button farthest to the right, which is the forward button, and that's actually a little easier and uh, the response time is a little quicker and it's less fatiguing, so usually it's better to do it that way. Now, I don't like the way we have two vernier shots in a row and then two hand shots in a row. So what you can do is you can resequence the thing, hover over it, left click and hold it, just drag it over to the line in between. We're going to place that between the two first pictures. So now we have vernier shot, hand shot, vernier shot, hand shot. For whatever reason, that just seems a little less monotonous to me. So that's basically how you preview your pictures and get them into their initial sequence. And once you have your basic sequence, you can add uh, things like effects and transitions. I'll show you transitions here first. And that will add these little spacers in between the clips. And if you hover over those, you get a message that says, drag a video transition here to add it between the two video clips. So you can go up to your editing functions, stage two, view transitions. Out of this selection of transitions, I happen to like the dissolve. So I'm going to just drag, click and drag dissolve into each of these transition spaces. So now I've added transitions and uh, I can always undo those, so I'm going to save the project now, drag it back to the beginning, and I'm going to click on this guy, and I'm going to just uh, play the movie. You can see how in the preview window you're getting the dissolve between, between shots. Now that dissolve came out of the transitions menu. I'll show you how to use uh, something from the effects menu. So view video effects let's say you really wanted to give people a headache by pixelating your uh, movie 
let's just drag that over here. You grab the pixelate up here, drag it to this first clip. Let's preview it to see what it looks like. Eh, I don't know. That might that might make somebody happy. It doesn't really make me happy. So to get rid of your effects. Your effects are indicated by this little star down here. If you have a clip with an effect on it, it will always have at least one star. And you can have multiple effects. So I'm going to right click on that, select video effects, and I will just uh, remove pixelate and OK. And you'll see that star go away down there. So that's how all of these effects work. Just drag them to the clip you want to use them on and you can take them out later if you don't like them. So again, in Edit Movie, make titles or credits. I'm going to save the project. Um, title at the beginning of the movie. Let's select that. It gives you a template here and you'll have some default text settings. It's always a blue background with white lettering by default. Uh, let's just call this uh, the Mantis Slideshow by DT. All right. Done. Add title to movie. Go back to make titles or credits. Click on it credits at the end of the movie. Now, this actually rolls. This is a rolling credit, so um, there. Camera by me directed directed by me. Done. Add title to movie. Uh, once again, one last time, I've saved the thing. Now let's uh, let's add a caption to one of these clips. Now the titles or credits lives in the same place as the um, captions do, so we'll open titles or credits again. Right here. And for a subtitle, we'll use uh, the option to add the subtitle on the selected clip. Add title on the selected clip in the timeline. We'll select this clip. Add title on selected clip. You get your text box. And now we will play it. Mantis is almost four inches long. Whammo. Isn't that wonderful? And uh, you can see where the you can see where the um, caption went. If you hover over it, it will say that it's four seconds long. The clip is five seconds long, so you can leave it just like it is. Um, if the clip was longer, like say it's uh, eight seconds long, you can actually drag this so that it comes in in the middle of the clip, like this. So it fades in and fades out. Uh, what else can you do? You could make the caption itself last longer by using the grab handles to lengthen it a little bit. Let's replay it again. So that's that's another option. And finally, um, if you double click on it, you'll get your text entry field back again. And you have some options like changing the title animation or the font text and color. Let's change the title animation. Click there. I generally use subtitle uh, because it keeps it out of the way of the picture uh, the best out of all of them. So here's subtitle. It moves the text down to here. Let's just say done. 
Uh, the other thing you can do, again, you can double click this text box will come up. Um, change the text font and color. Let's just turn it red. And I'll show you how that looks. And I find that most of the colors other than white tend to bleed a little bit. Uh, so I stick with white most of the time unless I have a very white background. The one thing I haven't touched on yet is that music that you might be able to hear. We're going to have to do something about that because that runs longer than the uh, slideshow. Uh, basically you now have about a minute long slideshow with a front title and a ending credit. Okay, the audio track's running way off to the right so I kind of have to go hunt it down so I can drag it back uh, to the end of the movie. There we go. Up oh, there's the end. And we will bring it back and we will bring it back some more. Okay, last step. Here it goes. Get it aligned with the end of the movie. I just started the movie from the beginning of the credits. It should end pretty much there. Okay, that's a little abrupt, so I'm going to put a little audio fade in there. So I'll right click on the audio file. On, on the audio track, I mean, to um, select it, and there's a fade out selection. Uh, it's not a very long or smooth or elegant fade. I think the live movie maker actually has some better options for that, but we'll just see how that sounds. A little bit less abrupt than it sounded before. Now we're basically ready to turn this beast into a movie for uploading to YouTube or for whatever you want to do with it. So we'll save it one more time. And again, going down this workflow, the next step after you've done all this editing stuff is save to my computer. I'll just leave the name as Mantis. That was the name I gave it earlier. Make sure you send it to a folder where you can find it. Um, I always do all the work for every movie in a, out of a single folder because it just puts everything where I need it and I don't have to hunt around for things. Uh, okay. Hit next. It will offer you best quality for playback on my computer. Recommended. That's wonderful show more choices. It has other resolution settings but uh, I kinda like best quality so go to next and it will show you a little uh, progress bar there just saying how how long it's taking. Slideshows take virtually no time at all. Uh, movies take longer and it says play the movie when uh, when I hit finish and when you do that it will open the movie in Windows um, what is it called? Windows Media Player and you can full screen it and you can watch it and sometimes you'll spot things at this point and you, you might want to go back to your movie maker um, program and you know mess with it some more. I usually do about three drafts from this point uh, I'll usually see little things that I hadn't seen before that I want to fix, but that's because I'm completely tired by that point. But that's the basics of how it works for a slideshow, and uh, I can do one on video too once uh, once you have some basic navigational skills.